And um, that's right, and then they can just move the slide. Yeah. Okay. Do I look like a remover? Yeah. I think do I look like yeah. a remover. Oh. <laughs> I think they haven't been used. They want to do that. They can. Oh, yeah, so we think that's fine. That's fine. I have an important emergency. Okay. So we see around the house.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the council meeting being held in the council chambers for this Monday, 27th of February. We will start with uh, item one, the opening affirmation and acknowledgement of country. We gather to represent the people of Albury who have entrusted us with this task. May our efforts be blessed with insight, wisdom and common sense. May our personal values give us honesty and courage to serve our community effectively and with respect for all. We would like to acknowledge the Wiradjuri people as the traditional custodians of the land that we meet upon today and pay our respects to the elders past, present and future, for they hold the memories, culture, tradition and hopes of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that contribute to our community. Thank you. Item two, recording and webcasting of the meeting. This council meeting is being webcast and recorded. By speaking at the council meeting, you agree to being recorded and webcast. Please ensure that if and when you are speaking at this council meeting, that you are respectful to other people and use appropriate language. Albury City accepts no liability for any defamatory or offensive remarks or gestures made during the course of this council meeting. An audio recording will be made for administrative purposes. Item three, conflict of interest declarations received by the chair and disclosure of political donations, Mr. CEO. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. Uh, one uh, conflict of interest declaration received for the meeting from Councillor David Thurley, a non-pecuniary less than significant uh, declaration of interest. Um, Councillor Thurley, uh, over a decade ago, was a consultant providing services to the French company SNF Flager and did the EIS for the factory at Lara uh, where one of the chemicals is made. This is in relation to item 13, CM 13.1 chemical supply contract. Uh, Councillor Thurley's action will be to stay in the chamber and participate in the vote. Um, and in relation to disclosure of political donations, Mayor King, um, the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act requires under section 10.4 that um, persons submitting planning applications or submissions regarding a planning application to disclose any reportable political donation and or gifts to any local councillor or employee of the council. Reportable political donations include those of $1,000. There are no development applications for consideration at this meeting. Uh, so there enters the advice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Thank you. CM4 apologies. There are none. Attendance by councillors at meeting via audio visual link. There are none. CM5 mayoral minute. I do have a mayoral minute. Council has received a request from Wodonga Council to jointly advocate for a purpose built hospital on a greenfield site. In October 2022, the Premiers of New South Wales and Victoria announced a total funding package of $558 million to redevelop the Aubrey Hospital campus of Aubrey Wodonga Health to create a world-class hospital for Aubrey Wodonga. Council acknowledged the announcement as an item of urgent general business at its meeting of 31st of October 2022. As highlighted in Albury City's adopted advocacy strategy of 2022 to 2025, our focus has been to call on government to determine the most effective infrastructure and systems required and to commit to delivering improved health services from the Albury Wodonga region. It is the responsibility of the New South Wales and Victorian government to provide health services that meet the needs of our growing regional community and we expect that they have the knowledge, skills and capabilities to deliver on these responsibilities. In making the announcement about the planned investment in the region's health infrastructure for completion by 2027, the government made its determination regarding site selection. 
We acknowledge and support all advocacy efforts for further detail in relation to the redevelopment to be provided. Since October, we have actively encouraged the New South Wales Government to expedite the release of the Master Plan to enable our community to understand what is proposed and how the redevelopment will meet immediate and longer term community needs. We have also advocated for more community engagement through the next phases of planning for the redevelopment. At a recent meeting of Riverina and Murray Joint Organisation, RAMJO, which is represented by 11 regional councils in the Riverina Murray region, the mayors there reiterated their strong support for the joint funding announcement that was made in October and expressed the urgency in building the single site hospital on the Albury campus as announced. We are extremely proud of and committed to our Two Cities, One Community partnership with Wodonga Council. The recently adopted Two Cities, One Community strategic plan of 2022-2025 highlights the depth and breadth of our collaboration across four key pillars of our economy, the environment, our community and partnering in leaderships. Leadership. This includes our commitment to advocate for health services that fully meet community needs. We acknowledge our successful joint advocacy to date and respect Wodonga Council's further advocacy agenda. However, there is insufficient evidence to justify advocacy for a greenfield site given specific details of the proposed Albury Hospital campus redevelopment are yet to be released. I'd like to move the following recommendation as a motion, councillors, that Council a. Continue to call on the Victorian, New South Wales and Australian governments to determine the most effective infrastructure and systems required and to commit to delivering improved health services for the growing albury wodonga region. B. Continue to reiterate strong support for the significant joint funding investment by the New South Wales and Victorian governments in the albury wodonga Health Albury Hospital campus redevelopment scheduled for completion in 2027. C, continue to advocate for the release of the Albury Wodonga Health Master Plan that has guided the New South Wales and Victorian Government health infrastructure investment decisions and identify further stages. D, continue to seek assurance from the New South Wales and Victorian Governments and Albury Wodonga Health that they will engage with councils, key stakeholders and the Albury Wodonga Regional Community in the next phase of planning for the Albury Wodonga Health Albury Hospital Campus redevelopment. E, continue to seek assurance from the New South Wales and Victorian governments and Albury Wodonga Health that the Albury Wodonga Health Albury Hospital Campus redevelopment will meet the current and future needs of the community as set out in the Albury Wodonga Health Clinical Services Plan. And F, notify Wodonga Council and other stakeholders of the outcome of Council's considerations in relation to the matter. Councillors, I invite your input. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. Um, I um, strongly support your mayoral minute. Um, and I think you've highlighted one of the most important issues in that we still have not seen the master plan. And I find it um, somewhat amazing that we we're asked to make major decisions about hospital development involving hundreds of millions of dollars, yet we don't see the plan for the long term. Um, I'm very happy that we've got money to start right now um, because we are in urgent need of some improvements, but this is not sufficient for 10, 15, 20 years. We need more and we need to know what that looks like. And at the moment, we don't. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. If we we'll just get your microphone off and I next in the queue, Councillor Glacken. Thank you, um, Mayor King. Um, I do support uh, your recommendation that you're putting to Council in your mayoral minute uh, and agree that we do need to continue to work with uh, the New South Wales, Victorian and Australian governments uh, to ensure that we get the best outcome for our Albury Wodonga region. Uh, it's not just about Albury, it's not about Albury and Wodonga, it's about Albury, Wodonga and our rather large region that uh, needs to access uh, medical and other services within our regional uh, cities. Uh, and we have over a quarter of a million people 
who regularly need access to those facilities that we have in our region. Um, and I have a question, if I may. My question is um, that, and it is my understanding that you and some of our staff visited uh, the Wagga Hospital um, soon after the announcement uh, was made uh, in October and that you undertook some uh, research while you were there uh, and you looked at the facilities and services that they have in another large regional city. Uh, could you highlight some of the aspects that you noted on that visit, please? Happy to do so. Thanks, Thank Councillor Glacken. One of the things that I was certainly approached a lot when I was first a councillor was what are we doing with health? What can we do? And if we can get a hospital like Wagga, that would be amazing. That was probably the overarching thing. We've got this Wagga Albury rivalry that's well uh, discussed and, and noted. And if that was one thing that came through loud and clear, if we could get something that Wagga has got, if we can emulate that, that would be a terrific outcome for Albury and for our community. So it was quite a delight to, to be able to see it firsthand. I'd heard so many wonderful stories. Uh, wasn't without their teething problems, and there are certainly lessons that they learned from that that hopefully can be incorporated with the decision makers that um, are heading this project. But uh, definitely it was state of the art. It was modern. It um, all linked in beautifully. Uh, Obviously, car parking was an issue and they acknowledged that there was still some work to do there. But I was so pleased that if if it resembles anything like what, what, what Wagga Hospital has, then we're certainly on the right path for our community. So, yeah, they were probably just the, the they'd thought of a lot of things we hadn't thought of. They'd also had education facilities come in. They've got this lecture theatre where you can have t um, teaching students doing mock uh, operations. You've got IT that's state of the art. To, you could have a, a lecturer in another room five doors away giving advice to these students where they're at. The staff amenities were amazing. There was an entire wing just for the staff uh, to relax and unwind and, and go about their amenities. So there were certainly uh, some great takeouts from, from that visit for sure. Uh, if you've turned your microphone off, Councillor Glacken, so I will have to get the other councillors to also turn theirs off. Councillor Cameron, would you mind just turning that off? Uh, Councillor Glacken, a follow-up? Sorry, yes, a follow-up, and I do apologise. Um, my follow-up is with reference to the physical size of uh, what is uh, the site that they had to deal with at Wagga uh, versus Albury. My understanding is um, that we actually have a larger physical site, but I just wanted to clarify that, please. I've been advised that Albury's physical site is larger than Wagga's physical site. I was also informed that 95% uh, of new hospital builds generally happen on existing sites. So I think that observation was confirmed by me, but I'm, I'm happy to defer to health experts for absolute clarity. But I was ex that was explained that the site of Albury's um, campus is a larger site than Wagga's. So you're correct in that observation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. I'll get you to take your microphone off. And Councillor Edwards was next in the queue. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. <clears throat> I'll be supporting this recommendation. Um, but I'd first like to thank Better Border Health and the Border Medical Association for their tireless advocacy. I want to see all the same things that they do. Access to safe and quality healthcare close to home, a significant increase in the range of services, beds and surgical theatres, and a teaching hospital to support recruitment and retention of staff. I want our hospital to meet the needs of our communities. In the 1990s, New South Wales got it wrong. By not building the recommended amount of beds at the then new Aubrey Base Hospital, we set up our community for 30 years of poor outcomes. I don't want the same mistakes to be repeated. That's why I strongly support the release of the master plan and advocacy for a solution that meets the needs of our two communities as set out in the clinical services plan. Yes, Aubrey City has welcomed the recent funding announcement, but we also resolve to continue to advocate for what was missing. These are the, some of the questions that were put to us by Better Border Health. How will the remaining stages be funded? We will continue to advocate for the, all stages of the project to be funded. How many additional beds and theatres will be provided? We will advocate for the needs of the community as outlined in the clinical services plan to be met by the project. 
what about the impact of construction at the existing hospital? We will work with Aubrey Wodonga Health to minimise the impacts of construction to staff, patients and nearby residents. When will we see a business plan, master plan, revised clinical plan? We have and will continue to advocate for the release of the master plan and other documents that are informing the current direction. My personal view from my experience with Greenfields developments is that a Greenfields option could add significant additional cost and five to 10 years to the project with planning and environmental approvals on top of the current proposal that has the initial stages completed in 2027. I'm not a medical professional, but I have heard the calls from staff who work at the hospital about the disruption of working in a construction site. And I agree, it's not ideal. I've carried my screaming seven-year-old child with a broken wrist through that current car park uh, of construction fencing uh, to the ED in the dark. It's not ideal. But does our community really want to wait another decade? We need beds, especially mental health beds, and we need them now. A greenfield site could mean up to a decade or more before our community sees a single extra bed. This aside, my focus remains on meeting the needs of the community, whether green or brown, Aubrey or Wodonga, so I would have no objection to any combination of solutions that would meet the needs of our community with the sense of urgency that they deserve. However, the fact is that despite decades of advocacy, the only funding currently on the table is for the Aubrey redevelopment. Should that change in the short term, I'll continue to welcome and support whatever solution best meets our community's needs, Aubrey's and Wodonga's, now and into the future. Aubrey City will continue our advocacy and I know Better Border Health, the Border Medical Association and Wodonga Council will continue to do the same for the benefit of our two cities, one community. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. As you, yep. Uh, Councillor Cameron. Oh, sorry, turned it off. Not how it works? Yep. Thank you, counterintuitive. Um, Mayor King, I was very involved in the uh, issues around campaigning for the new Aubrey Base Hospital as it was to be in 1991 to 1993. I worked at the old Aubrey Base Hospital at that time and I was president of the sub-branch of the hospital. Uh, it was known as the Health and, Empl Health and Research Employees Association, which is now the Health Services Union. I also became head of the hospital action group that was formed in Aubrey because at that time, our principal fear was that we would be subjected to a public-private partnership, as was the enthusiasm of the Griner government of the day, and in the same way that the disastrous experiment at Port Macquarie had been carried out in that way, where a public hospital was built partly as a private hospital in a public-private uh, partnership. Now, the seeds of our current crisis go back to 1993. Labor had held the seat of Aubrey from 78 till 88, when uh, in 88, of course, uh, a gentleman, Ian Glacken, who was the father of Councillor Glacken and a, a very fine gentleman, won the seat of Aubrey. And at that time, the two principal promises of that campaign from the aspiring Griner government, who were the opposition then in 88, were that Aubrey would get a new hospital and that we'd get a Lovington police station. Leaving aside uh, any more talk about politics than is necessary to understand what happened next, in 1993, the next state election was on. Labor's candidate was a sitting councillor called Peter Rowe. The promises were still for the Aubrey Base Hospital to be built, and we were promised a $76 million seven-storey hospital. Now, it may seem incredible that those were the figures, but those were the actual budgeted figures and realistic figures 30 years ago. $76 million for a seven-storey hospital. Just before the 93 election, no work had taken place and magically bulldozers appeared out on the site of the current hospital. No work was being actually done, but just before the election, bulldozers appeared. After the Liberal government, national government was handily returned in 93 with a much reduced, I shouldn't say handily, handily returned in Albury. Uh, they certainly won the seat very comprehensively in Albury. And after that, the bulldozers were removed and we entered a period of quietness again where not much action was seen. Before long, both the Premier, Nick Greiner, and the Health Minister, Mr Phillips, came to town and announced that the project would be scaled back to a $32 million, one-and-a-half-storey hospital. Mr Phillips uttered the, the very memorable line that I remember very well during that meeting. Let's not get caught up in an edifice complex, he said. 
it doesn't matter how big it is, it matters how effective it is. Well, sadly, as we've seen 30 over the last 30 years, it was never big enough. And it was never, as Councillor Edwards alluded to in her speech, it was never the original intention for it to be so small. Nevertheless, all governments are guilty of such things and all political parties at one time or another are guilty of such things. I'm not here to talk about partisan politics so much as to try and explain how we got to where we are. The proposition now that we should perhaps say that we don't want a redevelopment of the current site in preference of a greenfield site is a bit like the analogy of saying, would you like a brand new car? Or would you like a secondhand car? Of course, every one of us would want a brand new hospital on a greenfield site of, of appropriate size. Of course we would. Uh, I noticed that one of my colleagues from last council, a very respected surgeon, Don Stutchbury, has been active in the media saying that it, that's what's needed. And I've no doubt that that's right. But the real choice, the fact is, the choice of, is to go ahead with not just a promise, because it's progressed far past that, not just the promise of a redeveloped hospital, but the actual commitment that has been committed and budgeted by both state governments. No small undertaking and no small achievement to turn our backs on that and say that we don't want that, we want what we want. We want the ultimate. We want the brand new car. We're not going to be happy with the secondhand car. That is a parlous course of action. And politics being what it is, it would not take much for those resources to be speedily reallocated to other seats, particularly seats that are far more marginal than both Benambra and Albury. It would be an act of madness on our part to advocate for that. So one day, very soon, I, I, I'm sadly fear, we will need a bigger hospital. But at this moment, we would be mat crazy to turn our backs on the current commitments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Councillor Baker, once Councillor Cameron turns the microphone. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we've got some technical issues tonight. Councillor Baker. Thank you, Mee King. I will also support the recommendation. And the only thing I would like to say is that Nolan House has been in a state of disrepair um, and a parlous place that is really difficult to get into, not big enough, not great at all. And to think that that will be completed by 2027 gives me hope for some of the people in this community that, the, that are least able to represent themselves. So for me, that's a no-brainer. We take the money now and get this thing done. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Baker. Councillor Bowen, I'll just get that microphone off there. Sorry, I haven't got the controls oh, anymore. <laughs> Councillor yeah. Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King, and thank you to all the other councillors for their comments to date. I will also be supporting uh, the motion in all, all its entirety. Uh, to me, I think it's about moving forward with what we have, uh, with what we have now, which is a, a side announcement funding of over half a billion dollars uh, and to be completed by 2027. I think that's uh, absolutely massive. And to enable Aubrey Wodonga and the wider community to have a world-class facility so that more people in the region uh, can have uh, medical care that's uh, so, so well needed. Uh, I'm not prepared to put lives in jeopardy or at risk and delay this project any longer. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. Uh, Mayor King, I fully support your mayoral minute and the motion being moved uh, this evening. Um, I was excited to finally hear of funding being allocated to our region for health as we've been overlooked on too many occasions. We need to see the master plans as a matter of urgency and get on with improving the hospital system we have with the money allocated to us. As mentioned this evening, yes, a Greenfield site is utopic, but unlikely and certainly not on the table currently. I would also like to go a step further and suggest that the current model of a cross-state service such as Aubrey Wodonga Health is dysfunctional. And this is yet another example of being caught in a cross-state debacle. The hospital is a New South Wales asset, which should be linked with Murrumbidgee Health, seeking to engage in the Murrumbidgee model, which we talked of before, which trains and retains general practitioners and is regarded as one of the best in New South Wales. I wouldn't say that we rival Wagga. I would say that they are simply far superior in facility and in governance. The history of interstate collaboration on cross-border health services has been torturous and long-lived. 
And I implore Susan Lay, our member for Farrah, Justin Clancy, our member for Aubrey, Bonnie Taylor, our current minister for health, and Shadow Minister Ryan Park to investigate the cultural cover-up that bleeds toxicity and that is systemic, systemic over many years. There are countless differences in legal requirements, relevant regulation and administrative practices between states. Aubrey Wodonga Health Services is shrouded in ambiguity for their own benefit. Ultimately, we need to be governed by New South Wales Health. The current paradigm does not work. And this is another example of the infighting the cross-state border system provides. Hopefully the Rural Health Department will get off the ground with foresight from Dr Joe McGurr, member for Wagga Wagga, and Aubrey will get on board. Yes, we need a bigger bite of the pie, and until then, we take what we can get and we continue to advocate for more. Essentially, we are behind the eight ball with respect to health services locally. The prerogative should be more beds, better access and quality health services. We take the money, we build the hospital on one site at Aubrey and address the governance catastrophe. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Any other speakers, councillors? In that case, I'm happy to put the motion, those for, those against, the motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Item CM6, Action Plans. Councillor Furley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that the following action plans be received and noted. One, actions complete for noting only. Two, actions awaiting response from external parties. Three, actions in progress. And four, long-term issues, more than three months. Thank you, Councillor Furley. Councillor Betteridge. You through you, Mayor King. I'd be happy to second the motion. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Any speakers for or against, councillors? In that case, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, that motion is carried. CM7, confirmation of minutes of previous meetings. CM7.1, minutes of the council meeting held on the 13th of February at 6.19pm. Uh, Councillor Betridge. Thank you. Through you, Mayor King, I'd like to move the minutes of the council meeting held on Monday, the 13th of February, 2020 at 6.19pm be confirmed. Thank you. Councillor Bowen. I'd like to uh, second that motion. Councillors, uh, Councillor Betridge, do you wish to speak to it? Councillor, as it's procedures, if there's no speakers for or against on this procedural issue, we'll put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. Uh, CM8. Reports from community forums, there are none. CM9, notices of motion or notices of rescission, there are nine, there are none. CM10, presentations and deputations. We do have one of those. It relates to the Albury Youth Council and we welcome our representatives to make a presentation. We look forward to, to hearing this. Thank you. Okay. Oh, that's all good. I might just go back to the start there. Rightio. Uh, good evening, councillors. As the 2022 Aubrey Youth Mayor, it is my privilege to work on the Youth Council with Colby and Paige, who join me tonight for our annual presentation. We'd like to give you an insight into how our Youth Council has operated and involvement from a youth perspective on various community plans and give a snapshot at some of the projects we've led and been a part of. We begin tonight by acknowledging the Wiradjuri people, the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet and pay our respect to their elders past, present and future. The Aubrey City Youth Council is an advisory committee aimed at providing a platform for representatives aged 12 to 24 to raise the profile of young people in the local area and advocate on key issues. We've met weekly to discuss, plan and action a range of our ideas and have each personally grown as leaders and as a team. The voluntary work our Youth Council has been a part of in service of young people in our community is something myself and the other nine uh, youth councillors we represent this evening are immensely proud of. Youth councillors can nominate for any of four positions at the beginning of each youth council term. This is a process we'll begin for our 2023 youth council in the coming weeks. Each role is an official voluntary position that is performed as per the Aubrey Youth Council terms of reference. The positions are youth mayor, 
Deputy Youth Mayor, Secretary and Finance Officer. The Youth Council is a recognised stakeholder in many projects and master plans and a key point of reference for a number of community services. Over the past few years, Aubrey City has made a consistent effort towards engaging our community committee in a variety of areas relevant to young people, from communications to sustainability, community to economic development and more. In 2022, the Youth Council was engaged as a stakeholder through consultations such as the Aubrey Rodonga Integrated Transport Strategy and the Community Strategic Plan Review as part of the Two Cities One Community Partnership. This allowed our representatives to provide a first-hand understanding of the needs for better connectivity and accessibility throughout our city, as reflected in the 2021 Aubrey Youth Survey findings, with transport among the highest rated issues. It also highlighted the importance of correctly engaging with young people, as our demographic can often become outliers when traditional methods and or processes are applied. We were also consulted on a number of council plans and strategies, including the inland water safety strategy, focusing on measures and messaging towards protecting young people around the waters. The Eastern Hill Activation Master Plan with notable consideration of feedback from the Albury Mountain Bike Strategy and the Multicultural Plan, an area the Youth Council is working to deliver on with the Youth Focus Event Plan for 2024. Another key aspect to our place in the community is to represent a broader youth voice in areas not just related to young people now, but in the future as we move to inherit the world around us. This year, we were fortunate enough to work with a number of community organisations. These included the New South Wales Regional, Action, Regional Youth Action Plan through the Advocate for Children and Young People, which is a yearly plan that the advocate engages with youth councils around New South Wales to develop a unifying plan for all young people. We, we were also part of the New South Wales Department of Industry and Environment, so Environment's Reconnecting River program, where we participated in final consultations for the ongoing project. We also attended the Mental Health Community Forum hosted by Susan Lay, MP with Lockie and myself representing a youth perspective. And finally, we were also in attendance of the Rural Health Innovation Sprint hosted by La Trobe University, along with Councillor Bowen and Thurley. The Youth Council is also represented on three Aubrey City committees, including the Crime Prevention Committee, the Sustainability Advisory Committee, and the Aubrey Wodonga Aquatics Facility Committee, with members being nominated to attend at the beginning of each year. I've had the pleasure of being a part of the Sustainability Advisory Committee and it's been an amazing experience for me. Each meeting I learnt something new and afterwards I reported back to Youth Council informing of any key ideas, upcoming strategies and actions. On occasions it did push me outside my comfort zone, being I was the youngest person on the committee, it was the first time I'd written a council grade report and there were times I required a bit more explanation but the experience was overall, overall extremely valuable. I learned that Aubrey City, what Aubrey City is doing to better our city's environment and sustainable practices. I'm aware of Aubrey's carbon emission targets. I got to participate in a sustainability framework workshop where we discussed environmental themes, encouraging the culture of sustainability, as well as the ideals for an eco-friendly future. Over the year, I got to listen to and partake in many insightful presentations that opened my eyes to issues I wouldn't have known about otherwise. I'm grateful for having this opportunity and for the kindness shown by the whole committee. We're continuing to develop a proactive and relevant approach towards bettering our city for all young people. Uh, so here's an overview of the projects uh, we've been working on and continue to work on. We started the year with the Gindamana Sports Carnival, which engaged over 300 young people, most of whom have fewer access to, in a financial sense, to activities such as these. With coaching and training sessions in the weeks leading up, a round robin style game day, markets and stalls, a sausage sizzle, and even some medals handed out by the deputy mayor, this event was a big success to kickstart the year with a new youth council. 
A lot of the work we do is also in partnership with the Retro Management Committee organized from the Retro Youth Cafe. Their committee and our youth council see great potential to work together, particularly in events such as the Youth uh, Creators Market held in QE2 Square. Featuring a number of stalls, each run by a young person in Aubrey, our involvement here was around the planning and overseeing of the markets. The Aubrey Youth Disco was an event uh, focused on engaging primary school students. We welcomed over 250 students from a range of primary schools and invited a number of representatives from each to our meetings to hear their thoughts on how we could best facilitate this fun event. We're really excited to see a couple of the representatives have even nominated to be on our 2023 uh, Youth Council following this experience. Graffiti Removal Day was among our most successful events in a number of ways. Formally, this annual initiative received funding on a state level. As a youth council, we were disappointed uh, that this was not continued in 2022, but saw the value and the potential to continue this event locally. Therefore, we considered the best ways in which to continue the cause, in which we did in two ways. First was a social media campaign held from the various Aubrey City social accounts with videos and infographics uh, promoting the cause. This gave us an opportunity to work closer with the comms team here at Albury City and hear from them the best way to get our message across. Second was the day itself. We successfully cleaned seven sites in the CBD, a number we hope to increase this year with plans to engage members from the wider community as opposed to just our youth council. The Winter Solstice, finally, a community event which grows and grows each year, is one we're privileged to be a part of. I feel our youth council's greatest strength is really showed here um, as our community reach is, is displayed. As we each went back to our own schools, we held fundraisers and more importantly, raised awareness around the topic of mental health and suicide. These funds were then utilised to hold the Winter Solstice events, uh, of which we again supported in a practical capacity, lending our support to the event organisers where necessary. This council is currently developing a community survey aimed at creating a profile of bullying in Aubrey. The survey will be distributed at the beginning of the 2023 school year and focused towards high school students. The survey is intended to identify the current scope and impacts of bullying, awareness of school slash community services, and the differences in various school policies and procedures. The results of this and the progression of this project will be available at the next Youth Council quarterly report. Like many of us, having come into the Youth Council at the beginning of last year, it's been unreal, uh, to be honest, to meet a group of enthusiastic and passionate young people, each with our own skills and vision for the team, but then see that group to grow and work collaboratively in service of our community. It's a testament to Mandy, our supervisor, who deserves a special mention. It's a testament to Aubrey City for affording us this platform, but ultimately I believe it's a testament to our team whose names you see here. As your council have met weekly, so did we, with our focus being the same, community. Particularly for the youth council, young people in our community. I'd like to thank each of these youth councillors sincerely for taking the time to represent and be a part of our youth council. We've had an excellent year and we look forward to hearing of and continuing our work into 2023. Thank you, councillors. Thank you. Thank you, Lockie, Colby and Paige. Would a councillor like to move that uh, we've received that wonderful presentation? Thank you, councillor Cameron. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to say move and I'd like to uh, ask a question if I may have the youth council. You might. The second or first, yes. Um, just need the microphone off firstly. Sorry. Councillor uh, Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. I'd like to uh, second uh, Councillor Cameron's motion. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Do you uh, wish to speak to it clearly? Thank you, Mayor King. Um, I'd like to thank you on behalf of the council, but I'm sure councillors will wish to thank you individually as well. For the work that all of you have done. Uh, you are representatives and of what is probably the most important group of stakeholders in our community. And it's appropriate and reassuring that you serve on a number of our committees. And we do read the minutes of your meetings, although you may think we don't. And uh, it is important. And the work that you do is very important to the governance of the City of Albury. Uh, the question I'd like to ask you is an opinion of mine that I'd like to share with you and ask your opinion of. I've long thought that about the only thing that could improve the Youth Council and the way it operates 
is that if we um, is the method of its selection. Currently, invitations are invited from the suitable young or young people in the community. Those uh, those uh, applications are then more or less triaged by a member of staff and one or two councillors, and uh, interviews are conducted by that same group. Um, I've long thought that if we could somehow democratise the process more, perhaps by um, making holding an election of, and making it eligible to school captains, prefects across the range of all our border schools, I'm sorry, all our Aubrey schools, I should say, secondary schools, and create there for a pool from which people could be elected to the Youth Council, I feel that would give greater authority and strength to the Youth Council and it would um, command more respect. Not that you don't command respect, please please be reassured. What's your views on that? Oh, I can... Yeah, for sure. Um, as a third year member, I, I know this sentiment, sorry, through you, Mayor King, I know this sentiment has been raised before. Um, it's definitely a very important consideration uh, with such a diverse um, range of suburbs um, and schools in Albury that we represent. Um, I would say probably something um, that a member of staff would be able to better reflect and provide context of is the difficulty that we've had um, over the past several years in um, acquiring candidates. Um, so whether it was, whether we could look at a high hybrid model, um, introducing a democratic process, but also still allowing that nomination, self-nomination uh, as well um, to keep in mind um, the limited amount of nominations that we do receive, uh, but still offering that better sense of democracy and representation through the process. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Thank you. Councillor Bowen, do you wish to... Well, you're just giving you. me the look. I thought you might like to... Uh... Well, I'd just like to uh, echo the thoughts uh, of Councillor Cameron and congratulate all our youth councillors. Well, well done indeed. Uh, it's been a pleasure to see uh, your growth and to see what you've done within the community as well too. So uh, I've been involved with a, a couple of things that you have, uh, have been involved with and that always, always uh, have been uh, well received uh, and very professional. So congratulations. Well done. Thank you very much. Councillor Thurley. Something must rub off in the family. My granddaughter was on the council. <laughs> Councillors, uh, <laughs> Councillor Cameron, happy to put the motion. Yeah. Councillors, those for, those against, the presentation is carried, but you're not to leave quite so early, particularly you, Colby because I'm about to present an award for you for your significant contribution to Youth Council, as you just reflected there, that you've been on Youth Council for the past three years. Uh, and during this time, you've contributed to so many community projects. We know we've had, a, a I guess, a, a quick little overview of what's been happening this year, but New South Wales Clean Up Graffiti Day, Sustainability Festival, Youth Mental Health Forum, Albury Cities Youth Forum, All Abilities Disco, Care Van Fundraisers, Winter Solstice, New South Wales Strategic Plan for Young People, Youth Connect Card for Young People, and that is just a very narrow list. There are so many projects and campaigns that you've been directly involved in. And Colby, your involvement in council processes has emphasised the investment in building knowledge, skills and attributes of our young people, which really underpins the importance of engaging young people to advocate on behalf of young pe people. You set remarkably high standards, as we've heard tonight, in the way you've addressed that question, which is wonderful. For someone so young, you're really showing uh, what young people can are capable of and what can be achieved with commitment, passion and enthusiasm. There's no doubt you're a future leader and you've demonstrated that constantly to your peers, the potential that young people can reach through involvement in their community. Youth Council is voluntary, so I can't imagine how many hours you've put into this over your three years, um, but your time and your energy to improve the lives and outcomes of young people in Albury is to be commended. I saw you firsthand uh, at the 2050 Towards Albury uh, Forum with a lot of the business and health and, and leaders, and you were right there making some wonderful contributions that then reflected refinements to that uh, Towards 2050 uh, Community Strategic Plan, so I, I definitely got to see you in action there, so that was wonderful. We all would like to acknowledge and thank you for your contribution and wish you all the best in your future endeavours. And if you allow me to wander over there for this little presentation.
you may respond if you need to, Colby, if you feel like a parting gesture. If not, you're free to go. Thank you so much. Well done. And um, well done to uh, to Colby and pa uh, Lockie and Paige as well. Thank you for your presentation. Thanks so much. Thank you. Which brings us to our next item, CM11, reports on minutes of committees and working parties. There are none. CM12, documents for sealing. Do I have a councillor happy to move the motion? Councillor Glacken. Oh, Councillor. Oh, sorry, Councillor Betridge. Just missed the oh, light. It was hidden. So. Through you making, I'd like to move the council authorises its seal to be affixed to the documents outlined below. <coughs> In the presence of two signatories, authorised to affix a seal pursuant to Regulation 400 of the Local Government General Regulation 2021 in the Council Seal and Management of Legal Documents and Advice Procedure. A, triplicate deed of comfort between the parties, the State of New South Wales by the Department of Education, Ross Circuit Preschool Incorporated and Albury City Council, brackets DOC 23 slash 109 725. Thank you. I'll get Councillor Glacken next. Thank you, Councillor Glacken. Thank you. I'd like to second that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Betridge, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? No, thank you. Councillors, any speakers for or against? In that case, happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM13, officers' reports for consideration. CM 13.1, Chemical Supply Contract, Tender Number 22-001824, Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council 1 accepts the tender for scheduled rates contract number 22-01824, water and wastewater chemical supply contract from the following. A, Amiga Chemicals for the supply of aluminium sulphate for an estimated maximum contract value of $510,510, including GST for a three-year period. Exxon Proprietary Limited for the supply of chlorine gas for an estimated maximum contract value of $22,381.80, including GST for a three-year period. Consolidated Chemical Company for the supply of sodium hexafluorosilicate for an estimated maximum contract value of $76,200, including GST for a three-year period. Activated Carbon Technologies Proprietary Limited for the supply of powdered activated carbon for an estimated maximum contract value of $333,000, including GSP for a three-year period. Amiga Chemicals, the supply of sodium hypochloride, IBC, 1,000 litres, drop-off for an estimated maximum contract value of $67,500, including GST for a three-year period. Amiga Chemicals, the supply of sodium hypochloride, IBC, 1,000 litre, pump out for an estimated maximum contract value of $109,980, including GST for a three-year period. Amiga Chemicals, the supply of sodium hypochlorite, 15-litre drum for an estimated maximum contract value of $7,560, including GST for a three-year period. SNF Australia, proprietary limited for supply of polyacrylamide Magnafloc LT20, for an estimated maximum contract value of $9,000, including GST for a three-year period. I, SNF Australia Proprietary Limited to Supply of Polyacrylamide, FAM4351, for an estimated maximum contract value of $27,360, including GST, for a three year period. And J, SNF Australia Proprietary Limited for the Supply of Polyacrylamide, ZTAG 8160, for an estimated maximum contract value of $26,340, including GST, for a three year period. And two, that council will not accept any tender for the supply of calcium hydroxide lime as part of schedule of rates contract number 22-01824, water and wastewater chemical supply contract due to no conforming submissions received. You may all applaud now. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Bowen. And that's why I'm happy to second that <laughs> uh, motion. Uh, thank through you, Mayor King. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Councillor Thurley uh, had enough speaking for that one. Yeah. Any other councillors 
uh, with a comment, count, a question, Councillor Bowen. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. And to the relevant member of staff, if I may, uh, the, with regarding the chemical uh, contract uh, of uh, the question, what happens to the supply of the calcium hydroxide lime uh, with no conforming submissions? Uh, can I just see what we do regarding that? Mr. Warlow. Thank you for your question. And through you, Mayor King. <clears throat> Excuse me, Council will continue to get supplies for, of lime from our, our current supplier without entering into a direct contract. So we won't be going without that, that chemical. We just won't be forming a contract under this tender. Any follow-ups? Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. There's no other speakers for or against. Happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, that motion is carried. CM 13.2, the December quarter budget review. Councillor Betridge. Thank you. Through you, Mayor King, I'd like to move that Council receives and adopts the revised budget estimates for the 2022-23 financial year. Thank you, Councillor Betridge. Councillor uh, Callahan. Thank you, Mayor King. Happy to second the motion. Thank you. Councillor Betridge, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, no, thank you, Mayor King. Councillors, any speakers for or against? Happy to put the motion. Those for, those against, that motion is carried. CM 13.3, Albury Visitor Services and Engagement Review. Councillor Thurley. Thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council endorses the Albury Visitor Information Centre moving from its current location at the Station Master's House in the Railway Precinct to the Albury Library Museum by 30 September 2023. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion, Mayor King. Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor King. It does seem to me that uh, this move was long overdue and has to happen. However, um, I am concerned at the location, there is no parking. Parking is always tight in that area. But there are no, the other sites that were investigated have the same problem near the Botanic Gardens. Um, they, they all have this problem. Um, I'd like to think, though, that this is a short term measure to give us something to, to continue the service while we look for a more suitable location. I note that the Turks Head Museum was mentioned, uh, but there was a cost of $100,000 to upgrade that part. It would be the ideal place. It's uh, right on the old entry to town uh, and there's plenty of parking there. Um, but in, in the interim, this has to be done. Uh, we cannot continue working with uh, our staff being threatened or feeling unsafe. Uh, what I would like to ask, one question I'd like to ask uh, is, given that this is a joint visitor information centre, is this jointly funded in some way by Wodonga Council? Mr Glass? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Thurley, and through you, Mayor King. Um, uh, Wodonga Council do contribute to our visitor servicing arrangements, um, and it is specified in terms of their contribution uh, as to what amount they, they contribute. Is that the answer? Yes. Uh, follow up, please. Another speaker or question, Councillor Bowen? Thank you. I have a, a question, if I may, to the relevant member of staff through you, Mayor King. Uh, with no provision for parking in the short term, or just for this, hopefully, as a as Councillor Thurley uh, suggested, hopefully this is a temporary option, uh, are we able to provide a temporary solution whilst it is at the, uh, at the Library Museum for the use of at least a caravan or something of that nature? Because I think it's... Uh, the access to that if you are travelling through to go to a visitor information centre and you've got uh, a big vehicle or a van you're towing, uh, you, you'll be parking at the railway station having to walk down to the uh, library museum, which is not ideal. So hoping that we can do something as a council to provide maybe a temporary spot for that to happen. Mr Glass? Uh, thank you for the question, uh, Councillor Bowen, and through you, Mayor King. Look, we've been taking uh, daily data on the number of vehicles and number of uh, visitors that attend the VIC. And I'm happy to report that uh, during this financial year, uh, we've been having uh, 45 caravan um, visits to uh, the VIC per, per month. So that's about one and a half caravan visits per day. And you're quite, you're quite right, Councillor Bowen, we will, uh, should this recommendation 
uh, be endorsed by council tonight, we will engage with our traffic and transport team as well as our city planning team to find an appropriate lo location for uh, long vehicle parking uh, prior to the, uh, the September time period that has been identified. Any follow-ups? Thank you. That's what I wanted to hear. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Any other speakers for again? Councillor Cameron? Question, if I may, Mick. Mick. Um, how much do Wodonga Council contribute annually to the cost of this service? Uh, Mr. Glass? The um, overall agreement is in the order of $200,000. The actual breakdown of the visitor servicing amount, that's, that's the overall visitor servicing agreement uh, contribution. But the, the breakdown for the Visitor Information Centre, I'll have to take that question on notice and come back to you. Follow up, Councillor Cameron? No, I look forward to receiving that information. Understood. Any other speakers for or against? Might get your microphone. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Uh, if there are no other speakers for or against, Councillor Thurley, do you wish to close the debate? Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? That motion is carried. Item CM 13.4, Draft Albury Retail Action Plan 2023-2027 Public Exhibition Submissions. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Making. I'd like to move an alternative motion, if I may. We'll just get that up. Thank you. I move that Council A receive and note the 25 submissions received during the public exhibition period and B adopt the amended Aubrey Retail Action Plan 2023 to 2027 with the following additional amendments. One, add the following paragraphs to the end of section nine on page 27. Future development of the LFR, large format retail, in the East Aubrey Industrial Precinct should be guided by the revision of the East Aubrey Industrial Precinct Master Plan for the site's appropriateness including contemporary consideration of gateway amenity and environmental and heritage constraints, alternative suitable locations for the Albury local government area to supply additional bulky goods retail space over the next 20 years as per retail floor space projections should also be explored. And two, amend action item 3.3 on page 41 to state, consider suitable locations in the Albury local government area to supply additional bulky goods retail space as per retail floor space projections. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Callaghan. Happy to second the motion making. Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, I do, thank you. Uh, I welcome the community feedback and subsequent changes made to this plan, um, particular action 3.3, which on page 41 currently reads, consider suitable locations in the Aubrey LGA to supply 3,000 square metres of additional bulky goods. Uh, retail space over the next 20 years as per retail floor space projections. However, I'm proposing some further amendments for flexibility and consistency. The first proposed amendment in one uh, is additional text section nine that will better align that section with action 3.3 as presented to us and provide for future development um, to be guided by the revised master plan. The master plan is now over a decade old, and in that time, floor space requirements, community expectations, and environmental constraints have changed. Uh, we need a revised master plan to bring the vision for that precinct up to date. Uh, the second proposed amendment addresses the inconsistent floor space projections throughout the document. Uh, the proposed minor amendment to action 3.3 keeps the floor space requirement in line with projections rather than a specific figure. Uh, this also allows for some flexibility in the event that projections change over time. Uh, on the whole, I'm really impressed with this plan uh, for the future of retail in Aubrey. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Uh, speaker for Councillor Callaghan. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. Uh, yes, I'm happy with the amendment proposal. Um, in regards to, there's two issues, uh, two areas I'd like to talk to. Uh, first is the LFR, which is the large format retailing as well. I'm strongly opposed to the large format retail format retail, which is also referred to as bulky goods, which was proposed um, in East Strawberry. This amendment now gives consideration to the impact of Eight Mile Creek, Mungat Barina Reserve, the Murray River, and the way we want to welcome visitors from the Albury Airport. This area needs a lack of development to preserve the cultural significance that is Mungabarina Reserve and its surrounds. 
We as a council have declared a climate emergency and we have a duty of care to make decisions that will not put any undue pressure on the already fragile ecosystems that exist here. I'm glad the community have reiterated my concerns in regards to not pursuing large format retail and bulky goods on the southern side of the Riverina Freeway Highway. Further investigation must take place in regards to the appropriate zoning of all land on the southern side of the Riverina Highway. Our objective should be to conserve all the land that has an interface between rivers, creeks and streams, a riparian zone. This should be reviewed as a matter of urgency in the upcoming LEP and the DCP reports. Decisions we make now should have foresight, making sure we preserve our precious waterways for our children and their children and for many generations to come. Another area I'd like to address is with specific advocacy to the CBD parking. There were strong objections from retailers and residents who opposed changing the current parking from angled to parallel parking based on the detrimental impact due to traffic flow, loss of parking and business engagement. Although the Retail Action Plan does reference a future investigation into parking arrangements in the CBD, any significant changes to parking arrangements, including locations and positions, would be subject to a separate and comprehensive community engagement process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Any other speakers for or against? Councillor Edwards, do you wish to sum up? Uh, I just wanted to touch on car parking um, and to say that sometimes change is hard. Uh, and I understand that Aubrey's had angle parking on Dean Street for some time. However, change doesn't have to be bad. And parallel parking combined with centre perpendicular parking, for example, similar to some areas of Wodonga, could accommodate greener and cooler streets, more landscaping and more opportunities for outdoor dining with no or negligible loss to actual parking spaces. It's important that those who need access have access, but for those who are able it can be proven, it has been proven that more foot traffic equals more customers and more sales for local businesses. So I look forward to future consideration of changes to car parking on Dean Street as part of this plan to improve walkability, retail experience and amenity for our CBD for all of our community. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. We'll put the motion. Those for? Those against? That motion is carried. Oh, one. Yeah. Still the motion is carried. <laughs> CM, moving right along, CM 13.5, uh, 2024 New South Wales Local Government Ordinary Elections. There's a councillor able to thank you, councillor. <laughs> You're doing the big ones tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mickey. I move that Albury City Council uh, for the 2024 Local Government Election resolves that A, Shewan to section 296 bracket 2 and bracket 3 of the Local Government Act 1993 New South Wales, the Act, that an election arrangement be entered into by contract for the Electoral Commission to a Commissioner to administer all elections of the Council and B, Shewan to section 296, 2 and 3 of the Act as applied and modified by section 18 that a Council poll arrangement be entered into by contract for the Electoral Commissioner to administer all Council polls of the Council and C, pursuant to section 296, 2 and 3 of the Act as applied and modified by section 18, that a constitutional referendum arrangement be entered into by contract with the Electoral Commissioner to administer all constitutional referenda of the Council. Thank you, Councillor Burley. Just with that microphone, get you to pop that oh. and we can grab a seconder. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. I'll second that motion. Councillor Thurley, did you wish to speak to the motion at all? Sorry, I have to tap it again. Oh, no, Councillor Cameron. <laughs> um, I'd like to foreshadow that I have an amendment when, when the mover and second there have finished speaking. Thank you. Councillor Thurley, did you wish to speak to Happy to hear the amendment, Councillor Cameron. Thank you. If I'm very fortunate, the mover and seconder may find it acceptable and incorporate it into their motion. Um, the amendment is a, an addendum and would be paragraph D, and it would simply read, the council further resolves to adopt a no tolerance policy to non-conforming advertisement during the election period. <laughs> What's funny? <laughs> Thank you, Madam. Do we have a seconder? Or are you? Oh, yeah. Uh, Councillor Thurley, are you happy to accept the amendment? I don't think. 
I don't think it's relevant to this motion, quite frankly. I think it's a separate issue that needs to be tackled um, in, in a different way. All we're doing here is saying that we'll use the Electoral Commission to run our elections. How that's run is a separate matter. In that case, we'll debate the... Um... Well, perhaps not, Madam uh, Mayor, if I may. Oh. I'd like to withdraw that proposed amendment. Thank you. So withdrawn. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. <laughs> Councillor Thurley, do you wish to speak? Now I'll be motion? brief. It, it doesn't... We've had the Electoral Commission running the elections uh, since I, all the time that I've been on council. They run smoothly. They run well. Uh, they're well organised. And I can't see any reason to change that. Thank you, Councillor Thurley. Any speakers for or against? Happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. CM14, officers reports for noting. CM14.1, investment balances, January 2023. Councillor Betridge. Thank you, through you, making. I'd like to move that council receives and notes the investment balances report the month of January 2023. Thank you, Councillor Betridge. Thank Council you, Mayor King. I'll have the second that motion. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Councillor Betridge, do you wish to speak to the motion at all? Any councillors wishing to speak for or against? In that case, happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? That motion is carried. CM 14.2, Operational Plan Quarterly Progress Report, December 2022. Councillor Callaghan. Thank you, Mayor King. I'm happy to move that the Council receives and notes the December Operational Plan and Progress Report. Thank you, Councillor Callaghan. Any councillors happy to second that motion? Councillor Betridge. You through, Mayor King. I'm happy to second the motion. Councillor Callaghan, do you wish to speak to it? No, no other councillors? If not, happy to put the motion. Those for? Those against? That motion is carried. CM 14.3, 2022-23, development statistics for the December quarter. Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I got one. Um, <laughs> I'd just like to say that I hope our system will be restored soon because Councillor Betridge has reflexes like a cat, <laughs> whereas I'm more like a sloth. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'd like to move the Council receive and notes the information in the December 2022 quarterly development statistics report. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Councillor Callaghan. We second the motion making. Thank you, Councillor Cameron. Did you wish to speak to the motion? If, if there are no other... Speakers for or against, we'll put the motion then. Those for, those against, the motion is carried. CM 14.4, Youth Council Summary Report for 2022. Councillor Edwards. Thank you, Making. Uh, I move that Council receives and notes the Youth Council achievements as outlined in the Youth Council Summary Report, July 2022 uh, to November 2022 and presentation. Thank you. Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Mayor King. Uh, I thought uh, I'd like to second that. Thank you. Motion. Councillor Edwards, do you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, briefly, I think we've covered it off. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm so proud of all the work that the Youth Council has done and I'd like to thank the outgoing Youth Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillors for their dedication to the Youth of Albury. Um, I also look forward to meeting the incoming Youth Council and hearing about their priorities for young people and how the big council might be able to help them achieve those priorities. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. Any speakers for or against? In that case, we'll put the motion. Those for? Those against? That motion is carried. CM 14.5, Albury City Corporate Success Pillars, December 2022, quarterly update. Councillor Thurley. Uh, thank you, Mayor King. I move that Council receives and notes the Albury City Corporate Success Pillar, quarterly update, December 2022. Thank you. Councillor Edwards. Happy to second the motion, Mayor King. Councillor Thurley, did you wish to speak to the motion? Uh, mainly uh, of just a couple of questions, really, and they may come to several members of staff, depending. So we note in one part that the diversion rates from landfill have fallen, and it seems to me that this is a flattening out of the curve that we've seen for some time now. And what I'm asking is, do we have any um, strategies in place 
either by education or enforcement to try and lift that one. Mr. Finlayson. Ferris. Mr. Ferris, actually, sorry, thank you. Through you, Mayor King. Um, certainly, we're monitoring closely. We're identifying some of our larger customers at the Waste Management Centre. The target was 80%. Um, that was on the proviso that the biosolids were to be removed, which we haven't been able to achieve yet. And we're doing some further work on that now and bring it back to council later this year. Thank you. Was there a follow-up, Councillor yeah, Furley? Yeah, there, there I have two more questions. Um, uh, Mr Christie, well, this one, I think, uh, it's about DA times. Uh, we've we've um, significantly not met them on a few occasions. Um, just a bit of a background as to why is that staffing matters or other things? Mr Christie. Number of vacancies in our secondary, both amongst, both amongst buildings today. We'll just double check, stand by, Thank you, Mr. Christie. Yeah. Thank you for the question. And for you, Mayor King, I'll, I'll start again there for those who couldn't hear. Um, so, yes, there are a variety of, of contributing factors. One of them is due to staffing resources. So we do have a number of vacant positions, both in our building survey and our town planning team to undertake a number of those assessments. Uh, there are also obviously issues related to complexity of the types of applications that are coming in and the dealings with those applications and the need for either further information or further discussions with the community members or the applicants as we go through the process. And obviously then there are some issues, I know similar resourcing issues amongst the, uh, the planning professionals and development engineering professionals, et cetera, associated in the development field. And so they also have some associated delays in getting responses to us. Thank you, Mr. Christie, Councillor Thurley. And my last question is probably to the CEO. I note that staff turnover is actually quite high. I think it was uh, 71 people in from July to end of December, um, I presume we do do exit polls. And is there a, a common thread of why we're losing people? Is it better pay and conditions outside or some other matter? Mr. CEO. Uh, thank you for the question through you, Mayor King. Uh, all of those issues, Councillor Thurley, we're, we're experiencing a fairly um, fluid environment in terms of employment, if I might say that, um, being successful in in some areas of recruitment that we've been struggling to secure um, employees in, um, and others, um, you know, coupled with retirements and um, individuals really uh, making, um, you know, different um, career choices. Um, I think all local governments are struggling with that at the moment. Um, we are in the process of reviewing our um, our attraction and retention policies, which are part of the uh, potentially part of the um, the attraction and, and retention issue, um, and um, obviously doing a uh, financial sustainability review of the organisation, which aligns with that securing key people focus as well. So, number of strategies there that we've identified to action to try and address that turnover. Um, we'll be reporting the. Um, the national benchmarks uh, for local government um, shortly through to the ARIC and, and council. Um, we're probably not travelling too well in terms of, uh, sorry, too bad in terms of turnover compared to the sector more fully, um, notwithstanding it is very high. Thank you, Mr CEO, Councillor Thurley. Any other questions or comments? Then happy to put the motion. Those four? Those against, the motion is carried. CM15, delegates reports for noting, there are none. CM16, notice of urgent business. Councillors, is there? Councillor Cameron. Thank you, Councillor Clarkin, again. 
making. There is um, currently another Senate inquiry into rural bank closures. Um, I'm aware from comments earlier that we may have made previous submissions to previous inquiries. However, given the rate of uh, closure in our city of bank, uh, bank branches, particularly in Lavington and in North Albury, I believe it would behoove council to make a submission, a suitable submission to the inquiry. And could I ask the CEO to look into the matter and possibly prepare a report for council? Mr. CEO, uh, Councillor Cameron. Thank you for the question through you, Mayor King. Yes, certainly happy to do that. We'll look at the terms of reference and then prepare a draft report for further councillor and, and, and team input. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. CEO. CM17, confidential matters. There are none. I declare the meeting closed at 7.15pm. Thank you. Thank you.